Hi everyone and welcome back to the Age of Empires 4 technical stress test. As we have with the other civilizations, today we're going to take a look at the Abbasid dynasties, tech tree and also their civilization bonuses. Again in the description down below and if you want to look at the front of my channel I'm sure you'll find it, I've posted a video of the Abbasid dynasty gameplay and sort of an overview in more detail for all the little upgrades and how the House of Wisdom works and things like that as it's sometimes easier to see it than for me to just talk about it, but I will try and cover as much as I can here. Now, they've listed the Abbasid Dynasty as 2 out of 3 difficulty. I would say there are 3 out of 3, because the House of Wisdom provides a completely different age-up mechanic to all of the other civilizations we've seen so far. So that, to me, makes it A, more difficult, and B, the fact that this age-up mechanic is completely your choice makes it even more difficult. The House of Wisdom has four wings and you can choose any of them at each age to level up or to go up to the next age. The fact that you have that choice means that you have to tell it your playstyle, who you're playing against, etc, etc, etc. So making the wrong decision could potentially cost you a game because then you won't have access to the associated researchers. So I don't know, I feel like this is a more difficult one to play and quite confusing to play at first. But let's have a look at the civilization bonuses. So they have lots of research bonuses, they have anti-cavalry bonuses and they have their golden age, which we'll talk about. So first, the cavalry fighters. They are particularly good at countering cavalry based armies and this is mainly because of the bonuses that are provided by the camels. So the camels that they get also inspire other troops and give them defensive bonuses. And the camels themselves have bonus damage to horse or cavalry based units. And even the archery unit has bonus damage to cavalry units, as well as spearmen, which obviously you would expect the spearmen to be good against the camels, but not in this case. So they have the Golden Age. You can build towards your civilization's Golden Age, improving research production and gathering speeds. I feel like that's in the wrong order because the first Golden Age just does gathering speeds. The second Golden Age does research and gathering speeds and the third does all three of those. The Golden Age is based on how many buildings there are in the influence zone of your House of Wisdom. And that obviously expands with each building's influence zone as well. So. To get to the third level, you have to have 60 buildings built around it. So it's encouraging you to build a massive city that's very close together or reasonably close together, unlike some of the other civilizations which you might spread out a bit more. The pursuit of knowledge. Embrace the ambassador's pursuit of knowledge through their unique technologies located in the House of Wisdom structure. And again, there are so many technologies here. This is another thing that I think makes them difficult because you have to sort of pick and choose and choose the right ones at the right time. I'll give you an example is that there is an upgrade in there for improving your gathering rate of food at farms. However, it is more expensive than the ones that are available at least in the feudal and castle age at the mill. So you've gotta be careful about where you're spending your gold because you could get the same technology cheaper elsewhere at first. Yes, it's another 15% to add to that gathering at some point but you know you've got to think a bit more about when you're doing these upgrades because there are so many of them their civilization bonuses they gather from berry bushes 25 percent faster but they cannot gather from boar infantry units are able to construct rams and siege towers without researching siege engineering and siege engineering isn't even available as a research advance in ages by building wings from the house of wisdom and nearby buildings gain plus five fire armor now that, as I say, the advancing in ages by building wings from the House of Wisdom is completely up to you which ones you do. There are four in total and you can build all four, even though you can only get to age four. The final one just costs the same as it would have to got the Imperial Age. You can enter a Golden Age to speed up your resource gather rate, research times and production speed. Uh, see, now that's in the right order there. It's just further up that they've got it in the wrong order. And then docks are 50% cheaper. Siege Experts, we've already really discussed that, and unique units are the Camel Archer and Camel Rider. So let's have a little look through the actual tech tree. So Dark Age, you get your town center that you start with. 
You can build your villager, scout, and your textiles upgrade in the feudal age. No big changes there. You get your house, you get your mill, which again has the same set of upgrades that we were seeing for the other civilizations. Survival techniques increases your hunted meat carry capacity, your wheelbarrow carry capacity for everything by five and movement speed by 15%, professional scouts where the scouts can carry an animal carcass, and then things like the horticulture where you've got 15% at each stage or each age of the game. You have your lumber mill, which again has the same upgrades and your mining camp, which has specialized pick, acid distillation and cupellation. Again, just that 15% for gold and stone mining, no real changes from the other civilizations. Obviously you get your farm, then you get your barracks, which you start with spearmen, you get hardened spearmen. You do not get mana arms until the castle age here. So you're without any swordsmen for the first two ages. You get your dock, which has your usual fishing boat and transport ship, trade ship and the doe, which is your archer ship. Then you get your bargler, which is your broadside ballista. You get an explosive ship as well. And then you get the Zebek, which is your broadside cannon ship. So again, we're seeing the same types of ships for each of the civilizations. And again, we're getting the same sorts of upgrades. So you're getting the two fishing upgrades. One unique upgrade here that is unique to the Abbasids is the increase in the health of the house by 100. So that applies, I think, to both the archer ship and probably the explosive one, I assume. Though it doesn't particularly specify explosive there. You get your normal navigator lookout, you're getting your armored hull technology, you get your chaser cannons and your explosives. Actually, we're missing one there that the other factions have, which is the additional ballista. Moving on, we get our palisade walls, we get our palisade gate and the outpost that we have seen before and just your standard upgrades there with arrow slits, spring gold and also the cannon emplacement. And you can fortify that outpost. Then we have our house of wisdom and this is where things get very interesting and we're going to spend a little bit of time talking about it. So the House of Wisdom has four wings you can build. In the game, they're in a slightly different order to this, but the principle is the same. You get a culture wing, which unlocks the three technologies which we can see here, and let's have a quick look through them. Preservation of knowledge, which is available in the feudal age, reduce cost of all technology by 30%. I think that is a fantastic, well worth doing upgrade, though it probably wouldn't be the first one I want to do when I go to the second age. I'd probably consider one of the other wings first. Then in the castle age, you get the medical centers. Keeps will heal nearby units for two health every one second. And then finally you get faith, which is where imams can convert units without holding a relic, but can only target a single unit. So that's more like going back to the monks of previous games. And I still need to test the monks from the other civilizations because I just kind of assumed that they could convert single units anyway, but perhaps they can't. Perhaps that's a big change here. And then you have the economic wing, which is quite handy if you ask me early game. You get the fresh foodstuffs in the feudal age, which reduces the cost to produce villages by 50%, which is a huge saving. Then you get agriculture, and this is one of the ones that I was on about. The villages gathering rate from farms increases by 15%, but that costs 200 wood and 500 gold. That is considerably more expensive than the first two upgrades that is available at the mill. So you're much better off doing those first and leaving this till last. Improved processing, villagers drop off plus 8% more resources. This one confused me at first. So basically it literally just makes an additional 8% appear when they drop off their resources. So they don't actually appear to carry anymore, it just adds an additional 8%. So if each of your villagers carry 10 and two of them drop off at the same building at the same time, you will see 21 appear instead of just 20. Simple as that. Then you have the military wing, which has camel support. Camels increase the armor of nearby infantry by plus one, which is a fantastic upgrade. And camels aren't cheap but they're well worth it for these advantages and in influences they have on the other units in your army. Camel Rider Shields, 
Grant Camel Rider Shields, improving their melee armor by three. And then finally, Boot Camp, which increases the health of all infantry by 15%. You get your Trade Wing, which gives Spice Roads, which increases gold income from traders by 30%, which is a big bonus if you're going to be using them. Armored Caravans grants a plus five armor to traders and trade ships. And then the Grand Bazaar. Traders also return with a secondary resource. This resource is 25% the base gold value and is set at the market. And you can actually choose which one you want. You just click to toggle through them once you have done this research. There are four additional researches which are done at the House of Wisdom and these have nothing to do with the wings, so they are always available. First in the Feudal Age is the Phalanx, which increases the attack range of Spearmen by 100%. Again, showing how much benefit these guys get against cavalry. Then you have camel handling, which increases the movement speed of camel units by 15%, well worth getting for the camels and the amount you will be using. Camel barding increases the armor of camel units by plus two. And you'll actually notice this, I believe you can see this appear on the units once you've completed it, it appears as sort of a gold armor. And then there is the composite bows, which reduce the reload time of archers by minus 25%. Let's go and close that. So to go up, you will choose one of your House of Wisdom wings, and then you will go up to the Feudal Age, where you'll get your town center, which has everything that we've talked about before. You get your market with your trader, you get your blacksmith, which doesn't have anything extra. It has all the standard ones, but you will notice that it is missing the siege engineering because your infantry can already build everything. You get your battering ram and siege tower. Archery range, your standard archers, your crossbowmen, your hand cannoneer, and then your camel archer. Camel Archer Veteran, and obviously the Elite. And if we just hover over it, you can see here, highly mobile and durable ranged unit, effective against all cavalry. Bonus damage versus spearmen as well, and causes enemy cavalry to deal less damage. This is in an area of effect. So you're going to be devastating against any civilization which is heavily cavalry based. Then you get the stable, Obviously you get your scout, your horseman, your lancer, and your camel rider. Highly mobile and durable melee unit, effective against all cavalry. A bonus damage to cavalry causes enemy cavalry to deal less damage and has a high cost. So I don't think the causes enemy cavalry to deal less damage stacks. I think that would be crazy because if you had 50 camels, then, you know, you're going to basically be making the enemy do zero damage. So I think it's one camel puts its effect on a unit and that's all that is required, be that a bonus to your infantry or indeed a negative bonus to the enemy units. You get your stone wall, your stone wall gate and your stone wall tower. I can't click that to show you the upgrades, but it doesn't seem to get any is the answer. So you'll notice that with a couple of the civilizations, you have actually been able to choose your upgrades for your Stonewall Towers. But for the HRE and the Abbasid, you can't actually choose. You just get the default. And I'm not sure why that is. I don't know if it's just because they haven't added it in the beta yet, or they're just not getting that option. Question mark on that one. Then you get the Keep, which has the Spring Old Emplacement or the Cannon and Boiling Oil upgrades. You get your mosque, which has your Iman and only has the standard three technology upgrades. You get your siege workshop, which again has your Springold, the Manganel, the Canterway Trebuchet, a Bombard Cannon, and again we're seeing the Culverin, which is the anti-siege weapon unit, basically. You get greased axles, roller shutter triggers, adjustable crossbars, and the siege works. Nothing special there. I will note that They've accidentally put Scout in this list. You cannot build a Scout there. I don't know why that's there. It's obviously a mistake. Then you get your University or Madrasa in this case, which you get Chemistry, Geometry, Biology, Incendiary Arrows, Court Architects, and Elite Army Tactics. And I suppose in the grand scheme of things here, the main ones you're going to want are certainly Biology for your Cavalry. 
you're probably going to want incendiary arrows to improve the damage of your ranged or archer camels and obviously your elite army tactics to increase the health of your infantry and damage everything else is sort of if you fancy it or if you're using a lot of gunpowder units grab it and then you have the prayer hall of ukuba i'm not sure i'm pronouncing that right at all so i'm going to leave that there but again that is your wonder that you can build but that takes us to the end of their tech tree as i say i think in terms of their advancing through the ages and the amount of technologies they're quite a complex civilization to play they get a lot of bonuses to their camels and i think they're actually quite fun to play but i must admit out of all the civilizations so far they were the most confusing so i'm not convinced by this level two out of three difficulty i'm sure other people have played this this weekend i'd really love to know what you think of the house of wisdom aging up mechanic and all of the technologies do you think they're more complex overall than the other civilizations that we've seen so far or do you think they're about on balance do you think they are that two star level either way thanks very much for watching please do smash that like button and subscribe to the channel to stay up to date on the latest age 4 news and obviously for future age 4 related content thanks very much for watching and have a fantastic week